we all love producing shows and creating shows. I mean, gosh, that's why we're in this business. But this particular show has something, something extra. We've approached this show unlike any other Shamu show we've done in the past. The uh, show is opening in three parks at once. So we have, which means we have three teams. Can you guys go down and then come into it? All right, Sugar, here we go. Three directors are interacting with our three lead choreographers in the three uh, parks. The involvement of so many teams of people working together seemed almost impossible. When we get into rehearsal, it'll probably be a layering effect. Not everybody was thinking alike. And we didn't like the direction we were going. It's not quite right. So we started talking about connections and, and and how that could weave into the show. And many ideas were out on the table. And I think we all have such this excitement about what this could be. It was the training group that came up with the word believe. You have 25 minutes to kind of take all that creative spirit from all the energy of all the participants and put it behind this 9,000 pound whale. For years, the black and white wonder called Shamu has been delighting guests from every corner of the world. And why is that? Because Shamu is so awesome. We don't know much about him, but at the same time, when he jumps out of that pool, he elevates us. You cannot go anywhere else and have this experience. So when people come, they go automatically to see Shamu. So when SeaWorld set out to develop a new Shamu show, the challenge was to create one that would take the connection guests already have with Shamu to a higher level. About four years ago, we got together as a management team and asked ourselves what we thought of our Shamu show. We're about connections, we're about connecting with real things, but isn't there something more? Isn't there something bigger than connections? And we thought, what's bigger than that? The answer to that question was actually fueled by an inspirational story that happened almost 10 years earlier. Bush Entertainment Corporation, the parent company of SeaWorld, sent Vice President of Animal Training, Thad Lasinek, and other SeaWorld trainers to Puget Sound to conduct killer whale research. In his kayak, out in the water with killer whales, Lasinek had a realization. That was when I really thought, what am I doing out here? They could take me out like that if they wanted to. But, you know, I think those are the types of things, those are moments in your life that define your life, you know, where you think, wow, this is the most incredible thing I've ever done. It gave him a whole new perspective on his life and his chosen profession. How do we get in the water with the top predator in the ocean, you know, that kills and eats anything it wants to at any time? And it gave the team developing the new Shamu show some food for thought. And for us, that kicked off this whole idea of belief, this whole idea that each of us in our own world, in our own right, has a moment in our life where something happens to us and everything that's happened before comes into focus and we are changed from that moment on. The story of believe is inspired by the moments in our lives that change us forever. It was the training group that came up with the word believe and the whole sentiment of how big this is, uh, how big of a statement they wanted to make. And then, you know, we found ways to bring it through. Believe would prove to be the biggest production in SeaWorld's history, and its success or failure would depend on getting the best out of everyone, from the trainers to the directors to more than just a few killer whales. It would take a team effort on a grand scale the likes of which no one involved had ever attempted before. The challenge to develop a new Shamu show unlike any other had been accepted. The idea of us taking this great show and making it even better is a huge endeavor. And the idea was born. At some point in our life, we've had a moment where a door opens, something happens to us, and forever after that, we are changed. Throughout Believe, that concept would manifest itself in the unlikely connection between man and killer whale. 
We started off trying to say, how are we going to show this relationship? How are we going to get across what we do to the general public? The relationship between the trainers and killer whales may be a strong one now, but it didn't start out that way. Our philosophy started 28 years ago when we started working with these these animals and and really we weren't doing the best training you know it wasn't like there was any school you could go to learn how to train marine mammals there wasn't they didn't like us they didn't really interact with us well and we really had to change the way we worked with the animals we weren't in the water with them when we first worked with them and then somebody said hey let's actually get in the water with these animals you know the first time you jump in the water with a killer whale that weighs 6,000 pounds it's pretty intimidating you know you get in the water with them and they look a lot bigger right next to them in the water than they do when you're looking at them from the stadium, you know, when you're watching them through from a show. They look pretty big then, but when you get right in the water with them, right up next to them, it's pretty intimidating. And if the animal picks up that you're afraid, they'll push on you or they'll open their mouth to see what you're gonna do. They decided things needed to change. We had to really change the way we worked with these animals, the way we interacted with them. The, our whole training process turned into positive reinforcement. What it simply means is just encouraging them all the time. There's really no wrong. It's making sure that they understand what is right and highly reinforcing them when they achieve it. Ultimately, the relationships are based on trust. They're based on our positive reinforcement. They're based on fun. And really, the truth of the matter is, they're based on your heart. And they're based on you giving your love and your care to these animals on a daily basis. These animals thrive in these nurturing environments where we're always hugging them and loving them and telling them that they're doing really well. The end result? A training philosophy based on mutual love and respect. Because whales, like humans, need emotional nourishment too. That animal needs more than fish. We work with these animals after they're full, after they've had a couple hundred pounds in them, they could care less about having another fish. If I ask you to, uh, to uh, wash my car for me and I'll buy you a steak dinner, if you're really hungry, that's a good deal. You'll probably wash my car to get that steak dinner. But if you've just had a steak dinner and I ask you to wash my car, you're not gonna wanna do it. If they're not hungry, we have to have other things that they want from us. And it's, it's all about relationship. It's all about developing a strong bond. Once that bond forms, it truly takes on a life of its own. Oftentimes, a trainer will even define their career around their relationship with the whales. Well, who bases their career on, you know, they're not going to leave their job because their friend is at the job, let alone an animal? It's a lifestyle to be a trainer. When you talk to these people, um, the whales are their extended family. As close as anybody is here or listening uh, to their dog, and people are close and I'm close to my dog, it doesn't compare to what these trainers feel about their whales. I've spent 21 years of my life with killer whales, with my family here. I say quite often I have two kids in school and I have 10 in the pool. We all love all the whales, but there's always that one. And for me, there's one that she's it for me. Her name is Katina. She's actually a grandma. She started it all back in 1985. She had the first baby born um, in 85, and that was under our care. And I love her like a person. I feel that she's taught me how to be a better mom, a better wife, a better friend. Um, just a better human being. It's been truly the greatest gift I could ever have. Ultimately, it was this extraordinary bond that propelled the new show into uncharted waters. This show definitely challenged us to train so many more new things with these animals. Not only new behaviors, but being able to time these behaviors to musical cues. This is a great opportunity to test your relationship, too. Relationship is the thing that is going to get us to the next level. We've come up with 30 new behaviors, besides our other behaviors, um, for this show. Uh, we take a look at entrances and exits, and we want to make sure that each one is different. Each one has a unique look to it so that the show looks totally different. After 40 years of training, they said, you know, I bet our whales can move to the music. 
we can actually use choreography. After that chant music, it drops down. So as soon as we finish the last chant, the whale does one more thing, and then brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
but completely rebuilt it. All three stadiums underwent intense reconstruction, and the parks in Orlando and San Diego were able to take it even one step further. Actually, four giant steps further, with moving LED screens as big as the whales themselves. We wanted to use the screens and the story that we were telling on them to elevate the power, the majesty of what Shamu brings to bear in this incredible production. Now, we went to every LED vendor in the world, and everybody verified nobody does this. <laughs> These things weigh 5,000 pounds plus. You know, it's, it's like your car being, you know, spun on its side and moved back and forth. These four moving screens, they are 10 feet by 20 feet that would move into various positions that could create one single screen that is of great dimension, could create one long 10 foot by 80 foot screen. The challenges for us, of course, were the mechanics. You have a screen that's on a rotating disc. Well, how do you get the fiber optic cable through the disc into the screen so you can have an image? How do they rotate in time? How do they not crimp? How do we service them? How do they not crash into one another? The movement of the screens alone, we're going to have to get the whales used to, where they're going to be like, OK, I'm all right with this. And that would be our background, our palette against which we played out the story of this great connection between trainer and whale. And towering over it all, in each of the parks, a gigantic three-story whale tail. We have this you know, giant lift of a whale tail that, that I stood in front of it for the first time today. It is amazingly powerful. It is a place to feel noble about a celebration. And it's so lyric in its shape because it's shaped from nature. In the Believe show, the set, the music, and the whales and the behavior all intertwine more than we've ever put a show together before. Everybody came together to create this show. This wasn't the master of just one person. This was many minds, many hearts coming together to make it all happen. We're putting in a show that is really going to capture what it is and what it takes to be close to these animals. It's going to be amazing. When it's all clicking and we're hitting, we're all working together and it's going smooth, it's going to be the most amazing animal show in the world. Halfway through the show, someone's going to say, this ain't about a whale. You know, this is about my animals at home. Two thirds of the way through the show, they're going to say, this isn't about my animals through the show. This is about my kids, you know. End of the show, they're going to say, it's not about my kids. It's about my generation behind me and the generations ahead of me. Believe opened to rave reviews as the most innovative show in SeaWorld's history. For the first time ever, the talents of trainers, engineers, directors, composers, and creative teams, along with state-of-the-art technology and incredible killer whales were combined, all in an effort to show that when you believe, anything is possible. that dedicated their lives to this, to trying to communicate to 5,000 people at a sitting at 2 o'clock in the afternoon what the killer whale is.
This has been a very emotional journey because I think the story that we're telling is, is a beautiful, beautiful story. It's something that everyone can relate to. I don't think there could ever be a project like this project. It's craft as well as the passion of the performer saying, I believe. I don't know how many times we have to go through this. It's Rocket Hop, then Melody. We're opening the new show. Can you please try to get it right this time? <laughs>